study uh, art. And I was like, oh, from the stupid child in the class, I become a genius. And later, I, I have connection with, this, uh, with Victor until today. And I tell you what is his abilities. He can see people in a, not, he can, I, I will say it in, in, the, in what happened with me. He, he see me. He don't see that what I don't have, he see what I have. And that's the abilities that we need in the democratic education. We need a, a teacher that see the kids what he have and not what he doesn't have. I hope the, the English is a little... Oh, I think that, that I understand. <laughs> so it's an ability of the teacher to really see the student, be open to the full dimensions of what the student may have. Exactly. And which is different from the qualities of traditional teaching. Exactly. You know, this, um, let me tell you a personal story. Uh, this goes back now to the early 90s. This is uh, 20 years ago. Um, I'm in my second career now uh, as a broadcaster. My first career was as a professor of political economy. And, um, and I taught for 34 years. Um, and um, about 20 some years into my career, I, I was known as a kind of as a, one of those um, sort of charismatic teachers. And I would lecture, I did have lots of discussion, but it was, I have to confess, a teacher-centered classroom, even though I wanted the students to be involved. So I went to a week-long seminar to get away from the teacher-centered um, classroom and to become much more participatory and I started to use small groups and the groups were responsible for working through what we were doing. I became from charismatic I became hated. I mean literally hated. Uh, I never got such a negative response from the students. I remember a student coming into my office saying, I don't want to be responsible for my education. I want you to tell me, and I'll write it down and give it back. And um, it was really a terrible experience. If I had come to you and, and said, Yaakov, what am I doing wrong? What can I do? What would you tell me? I begin in a story that I hope that I can uh, say it in English. Uh, the story is that when I have a school, we have a, a small zoo in the school. It's not high. And, uh, petting. Petting. And uh, one day, in the night, come uh, people and s steal the pets. And uh, they open the, the gates and they take some animal and they f all the animal uh, stay in the night with upper, open uh, gates. When we come in the morning, we see that our zoo well, with the open gates and all the animal inside. And that's, I think, most of us, we have traditional. And it's very, very difficult to change the, the traditional. And and if you stay in uh, work, uh, go to a uh, jail, it's very, good, very, very difficult to live outside of jail. And I think when people say that, no, I don't want to take responsibility about our life, my life, I want that you will tell me what to do, this is a little bit like a jail. And we need to say freedom from this uh, jail. And the way is not simple. And, uh, and, and I will tell you that I think that a very good teacher is very important. Teacher that can inspire a student is very important. It's the most important thing. I think every one of us, if we have a teacher that can inspire us, uh, was inspired, it's wonderful. We win. How many, I will ask you, how many teachers that inspired you you find in your school? I think not very many. More than one? Mm, 
somewhere close to me. <laughs> okay. And in your question, I, your answer is very typical. Because by luck, we can find one teacher that inspired us. And that's in a 12 years in schooling. And that's very limit. But if we work as a net and the teacher say, okay, we, I can inspire some people, but now I need to find other people in the world that can inspire my children because to me I need to that every child will inspire as much as much more people that can inspire them that's a good teacher so that's what we try to do we make make all this democratic education to give the ability to the, every child in the world to meet inspired people as much as we can it's not only inspired people, it can be inspired project, inspired uh, program, inspiring. Yeah. inspiring uh, yeah. If you'd like to join our conversation, talk with Jakob Hecht. The number here is 303-442-4242. What are the sorts of problems that a democratic school will tend to have? I think the same problem that the traditional school have and the, the most of the, of the organization have. As I say that democratic education is something they need to develop himself every day. Because when you need to ask the question, how we connect to the real life, how we connect to the democracy, and to change yourself. If you stop to change yourself, you stop to be democratic education from my point of view. You, you, you find the truth. And if you find the truth, you become religious, uh, something that close, with a, uh, that cannot change. Uh, and we talk about something that change every day. And uh, a lot of uh, democratic school f begin to feel that they find the truth. And they know what everyone needs to do at school. And they begin to do every day the same things. And that's, I think, a problem that we have, like uh, most of the organization and, uh, uh, that exists in the world. And w what I think IDEC, that uh, now uh, it's uh, happened here in Boulder, it's something that every week, every year, we meet all to one week, all the people that deal in democratic education, and everyone share with another what happened in his school. And it's like a, a something that wake you up. You say, wow, what idea. I give you this. this uh, yesterday, I was in a school that came from Taiwan, and it was shocking me that such a school exists. <laughs> they they build a school that every year, they go to a trip of 50 days. 50 days trip. Uh, and half a year, they prepare themselves to this trip. So the school build up very simple. After you prepare yourself to the trip of the, as a group of 50 people, 